basically the general product overview, our goal with this webinar, and this is a brand new PowerPoint our marketing guy put together, but generally our goal is to get your eyes on each category on our website in the order they're in, in our website, just to kind of give you a little familiarity with how much stuff Midnight offers, because a lot of people don't really know all the offerings we have. So. Yeah, we have 35 different product categories, and so obviously you're not going to get to see everything that's in every product category, and like Ryan said, we just we want to give you a good idea of what we've got. Um, in the accessories section, it's got all the little parts and pieces that you need as far as, um, you know, the, the, the dead fronts for the for our combiners, it gives you the charge controller brackets, the relays, resistors, strain reliefs. It's, it's got all those little parts and pieces. And something that um, we probably ought to mention, too, is that when you go and you look at a product on our website, when you scroll down, when you actually click on the product and you're looking directly at the product and you scroll down, we give a list of accessories that work with those products. So. You may know that it's something that goes with one of our combiners, but you're not exactly certain what you're looking for. I would suggest you go and you look at that combiner, and then you scroll down and look at the accessories that go with it. And lots of times you'll be able to find pretty much what you're looking for. You can go to the next. Uh, before you uh, continue, that, uh, we've got around 20 person here that are uh, bilingual. They speak in French and in English. But uh, maybe they will have a few questions uh, for technical uh, question that will will have to uh, figure a way to do the translation. So uh, sure, just uh, yeah, stop yeah. us anytime you have questions on your end, and we'll we'll work through that. Yep. Yeah. So uh, I will let you continue. Uh, if there's any sign uh, in the the place here that someone want to ask a question. I will uh, just stop you and uh, let's see uh, what, what kind of uh, question they, they're having. Sure. Thank you. Yep. And, and I'm sorry I didn't really introduce myself. I just kind of launched straight into it. But I'm Rachel. I work in the sales department and I work with Ryan. Lots of times when people call and they have questions, they end up talking to me. So please feel free to reach out anytime you guys have questions. Um, email, call. I am pretty much always here. Okay. Thank you, Thank you very much, uh, Rachel. And uh, me, I'm uh, Sylvain Wazel from Renatech Energy. Um, um, uh, I got some people in the, the place here that are just asking to, when you're speaking, just speak a little bit slower, please. I okay. would appreciate it. Thank you very much. In our battery accessories section, um, we have all of our pre-assembled battery cables as well as um, our battery status, our battery capacity meter rather, hydrometers. Um, we also feature the 1,000 amp battery combiners. And, and those 1,000 amp battery combiners are made of powder-coated steel. They can hold up to 12 of the MNEDC battery breakers. Um, also a good thing to note is that the battery cables are available in a, an assortment of lengths as well as gauges, so definitely take a, a look at that. Ryan, can you move to the next slide, please? Our battery enclosures, um, we have indoor enclosures and outdoor enclosures. The outdoor enclosures are not officially listed to 3R, but they are built to a 3R standard. And something to, to definitely note, I, I keep referring back to the website, but it's an excellent resource. And if you look at the battery enclosure brochure, which we do have posted on the website, on page two of that, we do go through and give dimensions on all of our battery enclosures. Oh, are you going to the website? Yeah, I'll pull it up while you're talking about that. Okay, cool. And Lots of times when people call me, they're, they ask, well, can my battery fit in this particular enclosure? And I love to point them in the direction of this particular document because it's my go-to. Anytime anybody has any questions about our battery enclosures, I always take them to this document. I take them to page two and say, here, 
we can actually look and figure it out. Um, Unfortunately, it's in inches, but uh, it, it does give you a way to to look at the battery boxes and figure out what common batteries fit in what boxes. And if you scroll down, it will give you uh, the actual dimensions inside between the shelves, etc. Yeah. So that's that's sort of a, a nice hinter tip as far as the battery enclosures are concerned. Um, the indoor enclosures are gray powder-coated steel. The outdoor enclosures are white powder-coated aluminum. Um, like I said, we do have um, extra or replacement keys available, as well as extra shelving. Moving on to our breakers. All of the midnight circuit breakers can be used at 100% the rated current when they're mounted in one of our midnight enclosures. And they come in AC and DC. We have DIN rail and panel mount versions. Um, wide variety as far as 1 amp to 250 amps. We have the ground fault. Um, we also have remote trip breakers for the rapid shutdown equipment. Um, and then, of course, the breaker protectors and then the breaker adapter that would allow you to use a 3 quarter inch breaker in a 1 inch spot because the three-quarter inch breakers are a little bit more available than the one-inch ones are. Moving along, we have a bunch of bus bars, um, insulated bus bars, the grounding bus bars. We also have the 1,000 amp bus bars. Any of the bus bars that you'd be looking for to like replace from our, our combiner boxes, those are also available right here as well. And then moving on. There you go. So we'll we'll talk about charge controls after the break, but I would still hit on the just just real quickly on all three of them here. Yep. Yep. So we have three main charge controllers. The first is the Brat. It's a 30 amp, well, it's a 20 amp with a 10 amp load circuit, or you can parallel the two for a 30 amp charge controller. It's a PWM, um, able to do 12 and 24 volt battery banks. It is a sealed 3R enclosure, so it is weatherproof. Lots of times people like to take this charge controller along with our MNPV3 and use that as a breaker box, and it's also a 3R enclosure. So they'll, they'll take both of those and put those together somewhere outside so that, that this can really be like a truly weatherproof sort of unit for a small DC system of some sort. Um, does have a 10 amp load circuit with the customizable lighting controller, and I know that Ryan will probably hit more on the stuff, you know, all, all its special features a little later on in the program. Moving on to the kid, we actually picture it with the brand new wall mounted unit. It actually comes with it actually comes installed in that wall-mounted unit, and it makes wiring up the kit a whole lot easier. You can actually take off that bottom section, and all of your wiring can be done from the front now instead of having to go into the kit at the back. It makes things a whole lot easier. Um, having had the experience of having to change out a kit with using that wall-mount unit, it certainly makes changing out kits a whole lot easier. The kit is a 30-amp MPPT charge controller. It will work with 12 volt to 48 volt battery banks. It does have a two year warranty. We have a standard and marine version. The standard version, of course, comes with our new wall mount unit. The marine comes with the marine mounting bracket, as you see there on the bottom of the page. The big difference between the two is that the marine kit comes with a few more parts and pieces. There's um, some conduit. There's a battery temperature sensor, but essentially you're getting the same charge controller with either one. Uh, the kit also has a fully programmable load circuit. You got ahead of me. Oh, sorry. You know what? Well, ah, we'll just move on to the classics and, okay. Do you want to stay there? Or? No, it's okay. Okay, cool. Nope, the only other thing to mention about the kid, um, I had mentioned that it has the fully programmable load circuit, um, also has a lighting controller, <laughs> and 
and it, it also features AGS, the auto gen start, which is, which is a really nice feature for people who are looking to be able to run a generator and not have to be there to monitor it. Um, but Ryan can elaborate on that stuff later. Moving on to the classics. We have our standard classic, which is capable of solar, wind, and hydro. Um, in the 150, 200, and 250 volt models. It does come with a five-year warranty. It can charge on 12 to 72 volt battery banks. Uh, ground fault and arc fault is standard with both of our classics. And the, the standard classic is internet ready. Um, it will work with both our local app and our My Midnight website. Um, we, we definitely have more of those a little few few slides along. Uh, we have discontinued the classic light and for anybody who who is familiar with the classic light what we've come up with to replace that is actually the classic SL. There we go. There's the classic SL. And it is our solar only charge controller. It features a much more streamlined menu. Um, it does not have arc fault and it does not connect to the internet. Both the standard classic and the classic SL will work with our Whizbang Junior um, and does feature the Hyper VOC, which is our non operational safety zone for the classics when charging in cold weather climates. Moving on to the PV combiners. These are our standard PV combiners. You can, they can be used with fuses or breakers. Um, there's the MNPV3 through 16, so we, we have a range of, let's see what else here. And the only thing to really note with these is that you will need the Dash 250 for the Classic 200 and the Classic 250 if you're using these standard combiners. Um, we do have 1,000 volt combiners in this category. They, are, they work with fuses only and you will need fuses and fuse holders. They are not included. Yeah, uh, to, and the, to add to that, um, we make our combiner boxes a little confusing for you guys. Uh, so we call it an MNPV6, the second one in from the right, and it'll hold six breakers at 150 volts. But if you put fuses in it, it'll only hold four fuse holders. So it's it's really important to look at the description of the combiners, not just trust the model number, if you will. And of course, if you have any questions, we're both around and available to help sort out those sorts of things because a lot of these combiners don't have just one purpose. They have multiple purposes and so sometimes it gets a little confusing when you're there on the website looking at it. So please feel free to call us, email us anytime with questions regarding this sort of stuff. Um, we also have a couple different specialty combiners. I know that our slide mentions the Tesla Powerwall combiner for combining two of the Tesla Powerwall batteries. We also have um, an Aquian combiner that we're coming out with specifically for the Aquian batteries. But there are some other batteries that you could also use with that Aquian combiner, just simple wiring in parallel. We have um, a transition box for transitioning from PV wire to standard wire, and that box is rated at 1,000 volts. And then lastly, we do have um, an MNPV6 GFP16 35DC, and that's basically a combiner box that's designed to work for loads that run directly off of the PV array, um, pool pumps, water pumping, that sort of thing. Air conditioning, so, yeah. Yep, there's, there's a lot of different options. Moving on to our disconnecting combiners. Our disconnecting combiners are rated for 600 volts, not 1,000 volts. Um, some are birdhouse compatible, some are not. We, we've tried very hard on the website to have the ones that are not lab labeled very clearly that they are not birdhouse compatible. Um, 
4 through 16 string disconnecting combiners. Um, as we mentioned on the slide, the MNPV8HV and the MNPV16HV can be reconfigured in the field to work with the non-isolated inverters. We also have the shutoff boxes, which allow for, basically it's a pass-through, allow you to just shut down rather than combine your strings. And then we also have the dual channel, or the combiners for the dual channel MPPT transformerless inverters so that you could have two negatives and two positives going into one of those inverters. Did you have anything that you wanted to add on that, Ryan? Yeah, uh, Marco and everybody there, are you guys, are you seeing anything in the rapid shutdown area yet? Are you being forced to comply with that? Uh, we're not there yet. Um, uh, I know that in other province uh, there's a regulation about it, but um, here uh, it's, uh, it's going to be here soon, so maybe we should... Uh, Take a, a small look. Yeah, we, and we can do some separate webinars or something on that in the future, and I'm going to talk about some cool new products to help you guys with that. But something I wanted to point out just really quickly, hitting on what Rachel commented about some boxes being compatible with the birdhouse and some are not. The birdhouse basically is the initiator for rapid shutdown. The one thing we've done is we've created a whole category on our website for just rapid shutdown products, just because it's such a it's such a complicated thing. Uh, we tried to put everything under one umbrella so that when somebody does have to go find something, at least they know it has to be in this category or we don't make it. But definitely reach out to me when it comes to rapid shutdown because it's uh, it, it's definitely confusing at best, I guess is the way to say it. Yeah, it can be a rather complicated category, but... Yeah, absolutely. All righty. Moving into the e-panels, um, when you're looking at the e-panels, and we, we have a, a lot of different e-panels for, for all the major um, inverter manufacturers, Outback, Schneider, Magnum, SMA, Samlex, um, when you're looking at them on the website, we do have noted at the very top of the page um, anything special that you might need to know about picking out the proper e-panel. Again, this is the sort of thing that if you have questions, please feel free to give us a ring. Um, definitely here to help go through that sort of stuff. Um, we do have the, we do call out all the features on each of the e-panels, and you can see. Um, specific products that we make, you know, if we've included it, it is there on the website to take a look at. Um, all manuals, spec sheets, and stuff are there as well. Moving on to the mini DC disconnects. Nope. I'm sorry. Fuses. We do have fuses and fuse holders. Um, we do have a few 600 volt fuses that are still available, but for the most part we've moved to doing 1,000 volt fuses, and then of course our fuse holders are good for 1,000 volts as well. Yeah, basically what we found was that the cost of a 1,000 volt fuse was the same as a 600 volt fuse, so rather than stocking 600 and 1,000, we've just transitioned to all 1,000 volt fuses and fuse holders. Not a lot more you can say about fuses, but... And then our pre-wired systems, um, AC couple, grid tie with battery backup, the off-grid systems, and again, same same brands that we have the e-panels for, we have pre-wired systems for. Was there anything that you wanted to say regarding this, Ryan? Not really to speak of, but just know that we can, you know, Marco and his team can get you anything you need in the pre-wired department. We're very flexible in what we do. We do everything from just like uninterrupted power supplies. If somebody's got a small refrigerator or a few things they want to keep running during a power outage, we can do a small system for that, all the way to full-blown large off-grid systems uh, or grid tie, AC coupled. Um, you know, We have a whole variety of different things here. So if there's a need for anything battery-based with an inverter, 
you know, reach out to Marco and his team, and, and they can work with us, and we'll get you exactly what you need. And you're always free to call us as well, um, you know, with questions if you can't get Marco. But, yep. All righty. Now I believe we're moving on to the mini DC disconnects. There we go. Um, standard, they come with um, your choice of 125, 175, or 250 amp breakers. Um, they come on the right side. You can get them with those big, uh, big, big breakers on the left side as well. They accommodate five DIN rail breakers or three panel mount breakers. Something that I do like is that we have a plus version of this, which actually gives you two spots for breakers so that you can have twice as many DIN rail or panel mount breakers, or you can have one of each. It definitely allows a little bit more flexibility as far as the um, design of your system is concerned. We also have a C, I'm in DCC box, which is pretty much an empty box, and it has an adapter for a three-quarter inch MNEDC breaker instead of one of the big battery breakers. Um, and then we have the MNDC 15, which holds 15 of our panel mount breakers um, along the center, and it has one of the big battery breakers at the end. And again, you get your choice of 125 amp, 175 amp, or 255 amp. Um, and then the other thing that we do have pictured is the um, 175 or 250X2 model that comes with two of the battery breakers. So that comes in a slightly larger chassis than our standard mini DC disconnects, but it is available. And moving into the rapid shutdown stuff, Ryan kind of touched on this already in that, you know, basically we have all of this stuff in one spot on the website. Um, yeah, sort of. just basically in a nutshell, a place to go get everything. Uh, the system we currently have is basically an initiator box, which goes on the side of the building with the red push button. And it is a system of battery disconnect modules and combiner boxes that interface to this with a standard Cat5 cable. Uh, makes it pretty easy to install. Um, we do have a new system coming out. I don't know why the slides are changing on me, but anyways. Uh, we have a new system coming out that will be much simpler. I'll talk about that in a few more slides here. Uh, but just know that we get your back with anything rapid shutdown related when it does come up. And as you start seeing it, uh, you know, Marco and, and Sylvain can put together a, uh, a quick webinar. We'd be happy to host a webinar, and we can uh, get you guys in here and, and talk about what we can do and what we can do to help you. Okay, moving into the small breaker boxes. Pictured there is our big baby box, but we also have a just a, a regular baby box, which is a little bit smaller than that big baby box, and then we have an MNEDC quad box. The baby and the big baby box um, can each accommodate four of the DIN rail mount breakers. The quad box can hold four panel mount breakers. Um, these boxes will work with the AC or the DC breakers. Um, there's not a lot of wiring room in these things, but they're great for RVs, small off-grid applications. These are not outdoor rated boxes, so these will have to be inside somewhere. Moving, moving on to our software. This is the... I do want, quickly, I do want to point out, uh, for those of you who run into it, the baby box is not listed uh, for use. You know, it's, it's just an unlisted box. The big baby and the quad box both carry the proper listings for, you know, if you have to have an inspected system. So just keep that in mind. Okay. And Ryan will go over some of the software a little bit more in depth when he does the charge controller webinar. Um, but My Midnight is our cloud-based monitoring solution. It allows you to, from Anywhere that you can access the web and, and look at a website, you can see what your classic is doing by way of production. Um, there are a number of different parameters, as Ryan will show you here in a minute. Yeah, so basically, um, because we're going to run a little 
quick here on this session. I'll go over a little bit now. The charge control session tends to be a little longer, so we won't have to go into it. But like Rachel mentioned, there's a bunch of different parameters here you can look at. Um, and if you really get down and deep into the, the nerdy aspect of it, um, I actually have a classic running my radiant heat in my shop, if it'll actually load. And what you're looking at here, the pink lines represent water temperature going in the floor, and the yellow line represents concrete temperature in the slab. And the classic basically turns off and on the uh, boiler every time it's needed to keep the shop warm. So it's just pretty cool what you can do with it, what you can look at. You can stretch it way out, look at a big picture, or you can zoom way in on something. Uh, this, this is really useful if you get into a system where your customer is complaining that, oh, you installed this battery-based system for me. It worked great for two years, and now the battery's going dead all the time. You can go back in here and look at things and see what they've actually done. You can look at the battery voltage and kind of get an idea of are they actually getting some good charging or did they turn a bunch of extra loads on when you left? Because I don't know how many of you are familiar with doing off-grid systems, but from my past experience, anytime we install a battery-based system for a customer off-grid and we design it properly, the battery is going to go into float every day. The customer is really happy. And then they start to see the batteries in float and they go buy some more stuff and they plug more things in. And before you know it, the batteries aren't getting full. And you get into a day that looks like this one here where you don't actually get a full charge. And, you know, the batteries start to slowly degrade in voltage and they don't hold overnight. And the customer gets, you know, a little antsy and, and, and calls you. And this just is a good tool for you because you can look at that and say, oh, well, gee, I wonder what happened here. Maybe they got a bunch of snow and you didn't have any input. But it, it gives you that tool to go back, and you can go back a year in time and look at each individual day and see what's going on. And like I say, you can really zoom right in on it, you know, get right down to the, the real granular data here if you want. You'll notice on the left-hand side over here, it's populating as I move my cursor across the time. It shows what's going on. So this is just a free service we offer for the Classic Charge Controller, and we will be offering this for all new products, um, which I'll talk about in a little bit here. So. And then did you want to bring up the local app and show them that as well? Sure. Um, same thing, just different. The local app is a piece of software that runs on your computer. The big difference between the local app and My Midnight is the local app is a direct connection to the Classic. Therefore, you know, you can do all the configuration of it. You can set all the auxiliaries and anything you can do from the face of the Classic, you can program right here on the local app, which makes it really nice because if, if uh, any of you have played with the Classic or an Outback or a Morningstar, really any charge controller, you'll know that because space is limited, us manufacturers have to give you just a couple buttons and a small display. And it can get a little tough to, you know, actually go through that and see what's going on. But here we've broken it down into basic, advanced, and technical menus so that, you know, you, in theory, if you're setting up a solar array, you probably don't have to go to the advanced or tech. If you just want it to be a solar controller, you're going to go into the basic settings here. You're going to program your absorb, your equalize, your float voltage, simple things like that. Uh, but if you really want to get down in the weeds, you can go over into the tech menu and, you know, you can go down here and set all your features like ground fault and arc fault, etc. But it's just kind of a neat thing. The other cool thing about it is it data logs to the actual PC every two seconds. So if you're trying to find a problem or uh, an oddity with the system, you could actually throw a laptop computer in there, run this, and it will log every two seconds, and you can export it as a uh, Excel spreadsheet and go back and look at that data and really, really dig into that and figure out what's going on. Is the wind turbine doing this, or is the hydro turbine doing that? You know, it just gives you another tool in your toolbox, but... Pretty uh, pretty easy to use software. Um, like I said, no cost. Installed on the computer and it auto detects the classics on your network. You can use this remotely, but you do have to port forward in your router. So I will leave it at that. Ryan, well, yeah, we got a question here for your software. Sure, uh, sure. Are you connected to controller? Is it a uh, wire or is it Bluetooth or is it Wi Fi or? Yep, so the Classic itself has an Ethernet jack on it, so it would get connected to an Ethernet cable to the router somehow. 
You could use a wireless bridge back to a wireless router. You could use just a Cat5 cable back to the router. But it, it physically needs a wired connection to something that connects to the router. Okay, perfect. And uh, it works with Mac, I guess, too? The, I believe, you know, I, honestly, I'd have to look into that. But I believe it works with Mac. I know it works with Linux, so I would assume it works with Mac. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll have to look into that. I honestly, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on that one. I do know that it works on Linux. I've got it personally running on Linux myself, um, but Mac, I can't swear to it one way or the other. I'd have you. You can definitely email me, uh, Marco or Sylvain can get you my contact info, and I can look into that on the back end for you. Okay, thank you. Did you hear well the, the question uh, you folks uh, out there? Because uh, it was pretty far, so I just want to know uh, if you were here well. Yeah, I, I, I heard him just fine. I was a little quieter than you are, but it was yeah, very easy to understand. Yep. Oh, yes. Yep. And moving on to our surge protection devices. Um, Definitely, they come in 115 volt, 300 volt, and 600 volt. The 300 volt is available in AC and DC um, varieties. They all work with either you know AC or DC, so it definitely some flexibility there. The blue, we have two blue LEDs on either side of the SPDs, which will help you see if they're actually. Um, working. If you should notice that one or both of those LEDs are out, usually that means that there is something wrong with the SPD. So you like to take a look at that. Um, our SPDs are fully repairable. They have a five-year warranty and they are covered under warranty even if hit by lightning because they are doing their job. So that is something you can definitely have looked at. We also get a lot of people who ask us if you can use our SPDs for three-phase systems, and you can. We do have a wiring diagram, and that's something that I would suggest that you call and you talk to Ryan about. Um, you'd be using the SPD 600s, and, and we can definitely get you the wiring diagram or point you in the direction of it. It is something that we have on the website. And do you have anything to add to that, Ryan? Or Not a whole lot. The only tidbit I will add to that is if you're doing a DC system and you're using an MPPT charge controller, typically, you know, if you're using, say, a Morningstar or an Outback or a Midnight or a Magnum, they've got voltage ratings. You know, like an Outback is 150. Magnum is 200 volts. So I'll pick on the Outback one for a minute because they limit to 150. Let's say you're going to do two 60-cell modules in series you're looking at maybe 80, 90 volts, 9,500 volts open circuit up there in your cold climate in the dead of winter. So it may be tempting to use the 115, thinking that you're going to clamp earlier and maybe save more electronics if there is some lightning. But generally speaking, electronics can handle several thousand volts for a few milliseconds. So that's not a big concern. The concern I have with using the 115, say, on that Outback is if you happen to go back a couple of years later and want to add some modules, it may be tempting to say, oh, gee, you know, I'm going to add one more module per string so I don't have to rewire the combiner box. I just series one more module, and now you've exceeded the 115 volts, and the SO, yeah, the SOB, the uh, SPD is going to start to uh, conduct and then it's going to short out and do its job because the voltage is a little above what it's supposed to be. So I always base my SPD on the charge controller voltage. So if you're going to do a Morningstar 600 volt controller, use an SPD 600 no matter what the array voltage is. If you're going to do a classic 250, use an SPD 300. If you're going to use a classic 150, do an SPD 300. If you're doing a Magnum, do an SPD 300. So I always, I always tend to do that just because I've seen a couple installers get into problems with that, not even problems they created themselves. They actually went in to modify a system that somebody else had installed and said, gee, there's six strings of PV here. There's two in each string. 
I'm just going to add six modules and make it three in each string. And then next thing you know, this thing is conducting and they've got no voltage at the charge control and they can't figure out why. And we find out somebody used a 115. So that's that's just a general rule of thumb that I like to throw out there just to kind of save you from getting into any mischief. And then do you want to take over from the transfer switches because this is pretty much getting into the wind and hydro stuff? Sure. So I'll pick up here. We've got a few more products to talk about, and then I want to go into new products. And, uh, Marco, we, we're going to try to go until, like, about 2.30 before break. Is that right? Okay. Marco, I left. We had another appointment, but I will be there to answer Take a look with the question that we got. Okay. Yeah, and, and again, don't, you know, feel free to stop me at any time with questions. They don't have to wait until the end. So uh, transfer switches and stop switches. They're basically built around the same architecture. The stop switch is used for a wind turbine. Uh, transfer switch is used for, uh, well, two different AC sources. So if you've got an inverter, like a magnum inverter, let's say, that has a single AC input, and maybe you want to have a generator as backup to the grid, you need a way to connect both to that inverter. This transfer switch is very, you know, basically a very simple way of doing that. It lets you select between, like, the generator or the utility to go into that magnum inverter. Or you could do it the opposite way. If you had a particular load that you wanted to be able to move from the grid to the inverter during certain conditions, you could use this same transfer switch to do that. Uh, so available in a 30 amp version and a 60 amp version. Both versions are 12240. You could use them for 120 only if you wanted to, but as shipped they do come with the two pole breakers so they would work as 12240. And wind and hydro. I don't know if you guys, does anybody in the room do much in the wind field? No. no. Okay, so I won't go too far down the road. Just know that we have equipment that can control DC wind turbines or DC hydro turbines. So if you get called on to repair a system that has a wind turbine or a hydro turbine or install something, don't, you know, just give us a shout, reach out to us. We have clippers that can control those so they don't run away or over voltage things. And we have MPPT controllers that can properly charge batteries for them. So I, again, I don't want to drag you down a long road on that if nobody does wind. So I'm kind of, oh, i got to quit hitting that little mouse wheel. I'm kind of at the end of the general overview, uh, and I, I, I'm going to go into some new products. But before I go into the new products, I will stop. And uh, is, is there any questions? Did I miss anything somebody wants to talk about, uh, et cetera? I think it's very clear and uh, no question. Okay, perfect. So uh, moving forward, we're really excited about what you see on your screen now. This is our new power system. This is not an inverter. It's a power system. Uh, this is your breakers, all your breakers to do the installation correctly. It's all the metering. It's your charge controller modules and your inverter modules all in one chassis. This will come in a three position chassis or a five position chassis. What you see here is five positions. And what that means basically is you have these hot swappable modules that can be put in uh, you may only have one, you may have all five. But this allows you to build a very flexible power system, you know, for a battery-based system, either off-grid, grid-tied, self-consumption, whatever this, the, you know, the install may demand. Uh, each one of these modules is about 2,000 watts if it's an inverter module. The charge controller modules, we have a 200-volt version that does about 8,000 watts. And we have a 600-volt version that does about 5,000 watts. And, again, you can do up to two charge controller modules in this inverter and, and or up to all five inverter modules. So the general theory here was to be able to take this box and give you one 200-volt charge controller and four inverter modules and replace an Outback Radian and two FM80s and a much smaller package. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool. Let me pull this up real quick. Um, here's just a little bit more on it, you know, a little bit more pictures. 
this is one of the modules that goes in. Uh, you can stack it up to four high. You know, just kind of a cool uh, all-around system. And like I say, two kilowatt inverter modules, 5,000, 8,000 watt MPPT modules. It is definitely redundant, hot swappable. How many of you in the room have had to go out and replace manufacturer's electronics when they do break? <laughs> okay, okay, good. So, you know, that's not a fun thing to do. You know, you're, it's usually unpaid, or, or if it is paid, it's, it's uh, undercompensated compared to what you could be do, doing with new construction. What's cool about this is these modules are hot swappable, and you'll notice there's a four thumb screws, one in each corner. When, when there is a failure, and I say when, because every manufacturer is going to have equipment failures, no matter what they tell you. When there is a failure, the inverter will not go offline. It'll just lose one of its modules. And we can send out a new module. The customer to loosens these four thumb screws. This module literally just slides right out of the rack. Now, door closes so they can't touch anything. They take the new module out of the box, line it up with a couple card guides, slide it in, and it lights right up and goes to work. And then they tighten up the four thumb screws. So now this becomes repairable within five or ten minutes and you never had to roll a truck or anything to deal with it. So it's gonna be a it's gonna be a pretty sweet system from that respect. Every component in it is repairable in the field. The control board is right here. The relay board inside, the relays will most likely be socketable. Um, we're really hoping to have this in a very extensive beta program fourth quarter of this year. And then depending on how UL listing goes we're really hoping to have it, you know, at Remitech for sale uh, quickly in 2018. Uh, but as anybody that's ever dealt with UL knows, that is a moving timeline. So we're hoping for a quick run through UL, but you just never know with that. But anyways, that's our new power system that we're coming out with. Any of you that have made it to any of our recent shows have seen this, uh, but it's, it's just kind of a pretty cool product. We find that uh, totally amazing, and we got a question for you. Sure. Go ahead with the question. <clears throat> well, I understand that it's uh, the 600 volt, that's for the charging. Can you use it for solar, but at the same time for hydro or wind? Okay, so the 600 volt is, it could be solar, wind, or hydro, but not both at the same time. So you'd end up having to put in a couple modules, one for solar and one for hydro, if you wanted to do that. Okay, so you would have one module for each different type of energy coming in. That is correct, yes, yep. Now, that being said, I don't think we've got a slide on it, but we're working on a new charge controller. It's a standalone charge controller that would have to mount on the wall beside this, but it will be a 200 amp, dual MPPT charge controller. So one side of it could track a wind turbine and the other side could track a solar array independently. So it'll be a, a lot like your grid tie inverters that have dual MPPT. The charge controller will be the same way. It'll have two channels, 100 amps each. Um, you could parallel them for a large solar array or keep them isolated for two different energy sources. And this will be out next year. so. You're giving us a new option in the 600 volt uh, charging. Exactly. We're uh, we're we're in hopes to also make the dual MPPT available in 600 volts, and of course this will be available in 600 volts. So we're just trying to open some doors. Uh, one of the things that we're trying to do is make a complete system. Um, we've we've always focused on balance of system and charge controllers and everything else, but we're we have always been really good at power inverters. Uh, we did all the outback equipment, we did the trace equipment, and we helped with the magnum equipment. So it's it's just something we felt really strongly that we really wanted to do a really cool inverter. Uh, these modules are high frequency, so they're very lightweight. This assembly goes on the wall at about 50 pounds, and then the modules themselves weigh about 10 pounds apiece. So... You know, you can hang this rack on the wall at about 50 pounds by yourself and then populate the modules. So it's kind of something we're trying to break break some new ground and give you guys some new options. And what's your target price if you compare it to other brands? Sure. So on this particular product, being kind of the flagship inverter, 
we're really what we're trying to do here is we're going to try to target a price that will be less than say an outback radian of two fm80s so we want to be competitive to an equivalent size system from outback or snyder if you will and then of course we will have a full line of smaller inverters not modular but we'll build like a four kilowatt inverter that's in a chassis similar to say a magnum or the new snyder sw uh, just a lower cost inverter you know for those small cabin systems and stuff very interesting thank you so i won't bore you a lot on this because you guys are not forced of rapid shutdown yet but by the time you are just know that we have a very low cost solution here um, that's going to do rapid shutdown basically this is a re the piece on the right is a receiver that goes on every module or one on every string oh, I gotta quit hitting that wheel uh, one on every string or one on every module depending on what code cycle I believe you guys right now are only having to shut down the array not every module but uh, states actually just passed 2017 NEC which requires us to actually shut down every single module on the roof um, it's it's really it's a big burden actually you know it's really forcing installers into microinverters and stuff like that uh, so we've we've designed this product to be very low cost very robust and it's very simple this goes on the module this goes down at the grid tie inverter or charge controller this injects a, a power line carrier signal onto the PV wires. This listens for the signal. If the signal's present, it turns on. If it's not, it turns off. Uh, just very low cost. Uh, this is actually out now at three of the big players uh, being tested. Uh, Solar City, Vivint, and Sunrun are doing some extensive testing on this. If all goes well, it will be off to listing here within a couple weeks. So, really excited about this product. Just offering a a low-cost rapid shutdown solution for you guys. Oh, this one is more of a, I would say more of a guy's toy. Um, you know, this is something that the guy that just likes to fidget with stuff is going to really love. It's a small grid tie inverter for either wind or solar. Do about 750 volts. Uh, no batteries involved anywhere. It has a color display, capacitive touch buttons, and Bluetooth. So you can connect to it with your cell phone app, program it, watch it, etc. cetera. Um, again, it's not intended to replace Enphase inverters or Solar Edge, but it's going to be one of those where if you just want to throw a couple, three modules on the roof and connect something to it, and you really like gadgets, this is going to be really cool. Or if you've got a small wind turbine, 500 or 1,000 watt wind turbine, and you just want to grid tie it. You know, you just want to hook it up and make it do something without actually spending a lot of money on batteries and stuff. This will be a nice low-cost way of doing that. Uh, it is a complete aluminum casting. And this should be, eh, I'm guessing if everything goes right, which it looks like it's going to, this should be available sometime by the end of this year. And the wind kid and kid clipper, um, not a lot to say there. Just it's like the classic, other than it's a lot smaller. So if you've got a real small hydro, maybe you know 500 watt hydro or something, the classic may not make a lot of sense because of its size. It's just so big. This will be a lower cost solution to get that done instead of having to you know go as big as that. Kid, as you know, will do a 12, 24, or 48 volt system. It's good for up to 1,500 watts on a 48-volt system, et cetera, et cetera. I have no idea on availability on this. The uh, the holdup on this product right now is that the engineer that did the kid is actually doing a lot of modifications to the solar kid as well as doing the dual MPPT as well as doing the charge controller modules for the new inverter system. So he's, he's focusing a lot on the solar aspects right now. So this is kind of taking a little bit of a back burner but I do expect you'll see this sometime mid 2017 and wind turbines um, not sure how I feel about wind turbines but some people really like them some people hate them but Robin has decided that he really wants to offer a few wind turbines so we're going to have uh, the old Chinook 200 
was built by Pine Ridge Products. Um, they're friends of ours. They decided to quit building that just because they didn't want to be a manufacturer. We have brought that back and made some engineering improvements to it. And we're also building a 500-watt version of that. Uh, the 500-watt the will work with that grid tie inverter we showed earlier. They'll all, all be available as battery charging units. Um, the 500-watt version has some smarts to it. It has a clipper built into it as well as a vibration sensor, et cetera. And it even comes with Bluetooth, so you can you know, go over near the tower, connect to it with your cell phone, and download the, the data from it. Uh, the 500 watt will be nice for remote sites when you guys get into some stuff up there where maybe a railroad or something or a remote telecom site where they just don't get quite enough sun to really make solar work reliably all winter. You know, that might be something that you, you look into using. Um, the fact that it's got the smarts built into it can help, you know, keep itself from tearing itself apart during an ice storm or whatever. And I think that's pretty much brings me to the bottom of the first presentation. So hopefully you guys got lots of questions before break. <laughs> the presentation is so cool, and uh, you got all the, the information. It's very clear. I don't have any question. Uh, maybe one here, OK? <laughs> C'est euh, beaucoup de clients francophones qui ne lisent ni ne, ne comprennent euh, l'anglais. Quand ils font le traduction des systèmes et, euh, et classiques, il faut que je leur traduise les livres au complet ou toutes les. Est-ce qu'il y a ben, documentation en français, un start-up en français? Okay. Um, uh, there's one of uh, the installer here that uh, has a lot of clients that are French or francophone. Okay. And, uh, he, he has to translate all the, the information or the spec sheet uh, to them when they're selling the, the product. Uh, you got any other language than uh, English? when we get spec, uh, spec sheet or a kind of startup uh, kit that you can have uh, the French version? Sure, and that's, that's a very good question, and I am happy to work on that. Um, we did get started on that at one point, and we seemed to uh, die off, I think, just because there wasn't a big drive behind us. But as you can see here, we've done the classic and classic light in French, um, so yes, I'm happy to work on that, and if you want to email me directly, um, you know, you can get my contact info from anybody there, and I can start on the documentation that you need first, and we can get that done, um, and if there's somebody there that wants to help proofread some of these as we do translate them, that would even make it go faster, because that's, quite frankly, I think where we stumbled a little bit was in the proofreading after we you know, translated them. Exactly. Okay. So it's about the owner manual. Okay. About that and the uh, startup. Uh, the same thing we have in English. The startup guide. Very simple. All the information of the owner have to to do at the installation, not the uh, the complete. Uh, that are only the, the startup uh, and after he plug, how he plug it and how he, he can uh, put the, the information of his system. Okay, okay, yeah, I got you. Um, yeah, I can, I can definitely work on all of those. There's no problem with that at all. Um, you know, Rachel can can help as well. There's, there's a bunch of us here that can work on that. So I think that the big thing would be just shoot me an email so that it's fresh on my plate. Tell me what you need first, and I will get working on that. I'll get uh, our marketing guy to start working on it on his end, putting the documentation together, and we will get it off to some of you for proofreading. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, Thanks a lot. We got another question here. Okay. Uh, so uh, wind turbine. Yes. Uh, you have a, a price on that? 
I don't at the moment. I know that the 200 watt version, the goal was to be competitive with the Primus, small Primus. The 500 watt, I don't know. Um, the 200 watt should be going live on the website within three to four weeks, I'm told. The 500 watt, we actually just hired a production engineer to oversee that line and get things rolling. That will be probably needing some extensive beta testing. I'm going to say we're going to be looking for a lot of people that are willing to play with them for, I'm hoping, like a year because I, I really want to get some time on it before we just start selling it because that seems to be a common problem in the wind industry is people will make a new wind turbine and just sell it to you without any real hours on it and then you guys do the actual testing. So we on the 500-watt one, we're going to want to do some pretty extensive testing before we actually sell it. I'm uh, quite surprised to see all the new product that your guys are uh, working on. Uh, it's uh, really amazing, and uh, we're really happy to hear that. Yeah, it's you know, it's one thing that I have to give Robin credit on is he's always been the type to not set still. Sometimes too much so. Um, so much sometimes so much that we have so many engineers and so many ideas on our plate that it makes your head hurt thinking about which direction we're going to go today. But it's definitely been great for the industry because we, you know, we just keep progressing. I mean, for those of you that have been doing battery-based stuff for a while, you know, you can remember way back in the trace days when you wired up one of those old DR inverters, those square wave inverters, you couldn't even fit two fingers in the wiring compartment, let alone a hand. And each time Robin has moved along, he's given us better breaker boxes, better this, better that. So he does have a pretty good vision for that. So it's kind of exciting to keep moving forward with new products and kind of keep the industry on their toes, if you will, and uh, innovative. Yeah, we got another question. How about the wind clipper? Is it possible to use it uh, with other products? Other wind turbine? Yes, yeah, so the, the wind clipper itself is a standalone device. It will interface with the Classic if you're charging a battery, but it basically is a standalone device with a voltage controller in it that will limit the maximum speed of the wind turbine. Um, the only caveat to that is the clipper has a limit of 250 volts. So if the turbine is going to be like a 600-volt grid-tie turbine, you're not going to want to use it. But if you're doing you know, a lower voltage turbine into anything else, then the clipper would work just fine. Thank you. I think that's about it. Is there any other question? Yeah, yeah. yeah. reference. If we want to send you an email, uh, what's your email address? Ryan, R-Y-A-N, at midnightsolar.com. Okay. And I can do this uh, during the break. I can leave the website up with Rachel and I's contact information on it uh, as well so that you guys can copy it down or whatnot. Yeah. But right down here in the bottom, you'll find uh, our tech support manager, our tech support employees, Rachel's contact, my contact, and um, Walter wouldn't really apply to most of you, but for Marco and Sylvain, it would. He's the guy that you want to call and holler at when um, products aren't shipping as fast as you'd like. Well, we got all that, so thank you very much. Uh, we'll take a small break of, uh, what, in uh, 15 minutes? Is it okay?